Hi, I'm Andrew Gillis with Sephiroth Mineral Systems. I'm in my home office today and I'm going to be doing a video on the Falcon versus the Nelson Concentrator. Now this uh, may not be the video that most people are looking for. Uh, this is going to be uh, quite technical. It's not going to be a, you know, knock down, drag out, cage match between these two concentrators. Uh, really what I'm going to be talking about is the difference in the concentration mechanism between these two machines. Uh, so it's a fairly te technical topic, uh, but hopefully it'll be of interest to people who are familiar with uh, gravity centrifuges to begin with. So let's have a look here. So um, many of you, if you're familiar with one or both of these machines may recognize these. This is a quarter section view of the Nelson concentrator, and this is a quarter section view of the Falcon concentrator. Now the uh, key metallurgical element of each of these is the rotating bowl in the center. That's a centrifuge bowl that spins around to generate uh, the elevated g-force used for separation. And you can see right off the bat that these do look uh, a bit different. So the Nelson machine has this fully fluidized constant angle wall here in the bowl. And on the Falcon, there's an upper part that is substantially vertical and a lower part that is inclined. Uh, and Nelson has fluidized riffles all the way up and down. And the Falcon fluidized riffles are just here at the top. And then this bottom section is unfluidized. So what is the significance of the difference between the two of these? So the important thing is based and what I call the, um, you know, I refer to this as the dynamic slurry face or, uh, you know, the analogy to dry material is an angle of repose. So what happens is, is the slurry, uh, as, it's, as the G-force is applied, forms a natural angle on the bowl wall here. Uh, this is the top lip. It's going over. I think this is a Falcon SB750. The slurry builds up here and goes over, before it goes over the top. And this is a natural angle that's based on um, the coarseness or the particle size distribution of the solids in the feed and the um, percent solids or the slurry density. So it's going to be somewhere between like four or five degrees to probably you know, 10 or 12 degrees. If you have quite coarse material, let's say it's three millimeter minus 65% solids, it's gonna be in that sort of 10 degree range. Um, if you have very fine particles, 100, 150 micron, um, dilute slurry 30, 35%, it'll be in the, uh, you know, five, four, five, six degrees range. And it'll build up from the top lip of the bowl down. And this is where we start seeing the significant differences between the two machines and how they operate. So let's start with the Nelson concentrator. So this is the, an outline of the Nelson bowl profile. Um, it's simplified, but the geometry of this is, is accurate. Okay, uh, so again, you know, we've got fluidized riffles in here, uh, water's being injected from the back, Slurry is coming through a central feed pipe down here. Uh, there's a baffle plate that's normally in here, so we'll hit the bowl wall and then start coming up. Let's put a ruler on here. So let's find that. Let's pick a you know an average angle here of say um, seven degrees from vertical, which is fairly typical. And as I said, this will build down from the top lip. So we've got angle here and then oh we run into the nose of a riffle so we've got another angle here and this is because the overall angle of the nelson bowl is greater than a dynamic slurry face or sorry is more shallow than the dynamic slurry face angle so this is like you know 14 degrees or so 13 14 degrees and so the slurry doesn't have an opportunity to build up all the way down. You get these um, little faces in each riffle. And so what does that mean? That means that, and this is, this is the case all the way down, you know, I'll just fill that in quickly. Um, what's going to happen here is the slurry travels up this wall. It'll cascade over to the next riffle and form a little eddy current. 
And so let's zoom in here just to get a bit closer and see what's going on. So let's get this, let's get our trusty ruler back here. And so it's gonna build up, you know, roughly from the nose of this riffle, it's gonna come down here. We'll put another one here just so we can kind of see what's, what's happening. So here the slurry is going to fall over and create a little bit of turbulence based on this, this gap right here as it cascades over. And this is similar to just say the operation of a sluice box that may have a couple riffles and you know water rushes up and over and a little turbulence forms as it as it falls this distance and that happens on these. And so same principle here, you've got this little turbulent zone there's also fluidization water, this is full. So it's creating uh, you know, these eddy currents to capture particles in the back of, uh, in the front of the riffle. Um, you know, historically it's a good gold recovery mechanism, you know, used early on sluice boxes and it's exploiting the same principle. But on the other hand, we've got the Falcon concentrator here. And you can see this looks quite a bit different due to that vertical section that we have. So let's see how that manifests itself when we put the angle on. So again, builds up from the top lip down and we've got slurry formed like this. And then all this is gonna be filled with material. And you've got the, again, slurry coming in, hits a baffle here starts going up the wall. And we call this the, you know, the segregation zone where the heavy particles will start getting pushed against the wall. And then they migrate more slowly up here and are retained in the riffles. And right here, we've got fast moving slurry. Here we've got slurry that's, or particles that are not moving at all. And in here, it's a little bit of a transition. But the significance here is, you know, you don't have these eddy current waterfalls creating turbulence at the start of each of the riffle. So for that reason, um, you know, the bowls look fairly similar, but the, the mechanism of concentration and of particle capture is actually quite a bit different once you get into the technical details of these two things. So it begs the question um, pretty quickly, which of these is better? Uh, which is which recovers more gold? Do they recover different particles? You know, intuitively you'd think, yeah, they probably do. Um, anecdotally, uh, in the industry, there's this belief that, hey, you know, the Nelson may be a bit better on coarse, the Falcon may be a bit better on fines. Um, but, you know, due to the challenge one of, of sampling the large streams that these concentrators usually deal with, and, you know, the hesitation that a lot of operations have about, you know, really analyzing a gravity concentrate, because it's, it's worth a lot of money, and it's gold you've already recovered, um, and intend to sell. You know, this hasn't really been answered definitively. And there hasn't been, you know, like a clear answer to, you know, which machine does better on which particles. Uh, so, you know, I hate to do this, um, but it'll, this is going to end on a bit of a cliffhanger. You know, we got to the point where, you know, we wanted an answer to this question. So we decided to do a head dead comparison on the same machine under controlled conditions with different bowl profiles. Um, we've got those results, uh, had some interesting results from some other, um, geometries that we played around with too. And we'll be uh, releasing that video uh, sometime soon. So please stay tuned uh, for the results. Hopefully you now have a better understanding of the difference in the concentration mechanisms between the two concentrators. And we'll follow it up with some answers about do these concentration mechanism differences actually translate to differences in gold recovery and the types of particles recovered by each machine. So I hope to see you back for that video.